Hello everyone and welcome to attachment lesson 3, which is going to cover the role of the father. Now in attachment research, a father is anybody who takes on the role of the main male caregiver. And that can be, but it doesn't have to be, the biological father. Now research into the role of the father is often neglected in attachment, with the majority of research actually focusing on the mother-infant relationship. That being said, a lot of research has been done asking a variety of different questions, and this is what we're going to be looking at in this video. Some of the questions that have been asked include whether babies actually attach to their fathers at all, and if so, when do they attach? Do fathers actually play a distinctive role in attachment? And can fathers be primary caregivers? And to answer these questions, we're going to have a look at three different research studies. So the first question is, do babies attach to their fathers, and if so, when? And to answer that, we're going to have a look at Schaffer and Emerson from 1964. You've covered this study already in Schaffer Stages of Attachment. However, if you can't remember, then the link to that video should be appearing on your screen now, so you can check it out if you need to. So in their research, it was found that infants usually attach to their mothers first, at around the age of seven months, give or take. Also, generally, infants had formed a secondary attachment to fathers in the weeks following their first attachment, and by around 18 months, 75% of the babies had formed an attachment to their father. And so the answer to the question as to whether or not they do attach to their fathers is yes. They do form a secondary attachment to their fathers, but generally they form their primary attachment to their mothers first. Okay, so that's a nice, simple one to, uh, to just kind of use. It answers the question as to whether or not they attach to fathers or not, um, and you can reuse a study that you already know. So moving on, other research has focused on whether or not fathers hold some specific value in development, or do they have a distinctive role, or make some kind of unique contribution. And to answer that question, we are going to look at research conducted by Grossman et al. in 2002, who conducted a longitudinal study looking at parents' behaviour and its relationship to the quality of their children's later attachments. So on the one hand, it was found that the quality of infant attachments with the mother was linked to children attachments in adolescence, which suggests that father's attachments are actually less important. However, it was also found that the quality of father's play with their babies was related to the quality of adolescent attachments. So research findings like that suggests that fathers do actually have a distinctive role, but it's one that's more to do with play and stimulation rather than nurturing and emotional development. And in a third and final piece of research, it was looked into whether or not fathers can be primary caregivers. And it was found that in the cases when fathers do take on the role of primary carers, they very often adopt the emotional role that's generally more typical of mothers. So for example, in research by Field et al. in 1978, face-to-face -face interactions between infants and primary caregiver mothers, primary caregiver fathers, and secondary caregiver fathers were observed and compared. And it was found that primary caregiver fathers spent more time, like mothers, holding, smiling, and imitating than secondary caregiver fathers did. So effectively, the primary caregiver fathers were displaying important behaviours like interactional synchrony and reciprocity, which we know are crucial when building attachments. So that shows that the father can be more nurturing and that actually gender is not the key, but rather the level of responsiveness to the needs of the child. So those were your three brief research studies into the role of the father. We're now going to have a quick look at a couple of evaluation points and then we're going to move on and just have a quick look at how you can put all of those studies into a six mark outline for an essay. Okay. So first off, we have a limitation of this research, and that limitation concerns itself with confusion over the research question. 
So a big issue with research into the role of the father is the lack of clarity over the question that's being asked. The question of what the role of the father is is much more complicated than it sounds. Because as we've just seen, some research is interested in their role as a secondary attachment, like Grossman, and others are interested in their role as a primary attachment, like Field et al. And depending on what they're looking at, the findings also vary as well. Some of the studies find the fathers behaving like primary carers, and others find the father in a distinctive role like that of a playmate, like in Grossman's study. So having a lot of different research questions, and the fact that a lot of different research questions actually brings with them a lot of different findings, makes it very difficult to offer a simple answer to the question of what the role of the father actually is. Because really, it depends on what specific role is being discussed and researched. Okay, so not having a distinctive question means that we can't give a distinctive answer, and that is a problem with the research into this topic. Another limitation of this research is the fact that there is a lot of conflicting evidence about the role of the father. So on the one hand, you've got studies like Grossman, which have suggested that fathers are a secondary attachment figure and have an important and distinct role in the children's development. However, if that is the case, we would expect children growing up in single mother and lesbian parent families to turn out different in some way, to maybe be at a disadvantage or something like that. But research shows that that is not the case as is suggested by McCallum and Gollenbock in 2004. So that means that the question as to whether fathers actually have a distinctive and unique role still remains unanswered. And as a final evaluation point, I have a real world application for you. And that is the fact that research into the role of the father can be used to offer advice to parents. So parents and prospective parents sometimes agonize over decisions like who should take on the primary caregiver role. And for some, this can even mean worrying about whether or not to have children at all. Mothers could feel pressured to stay at home because of stereotypical views of mother's and father's role. Equally, fathers could feel pressured to focus on work rather than parenting. And in some families, that might just not be economical. Regardless of economics, it might just not be what they want to do. Research into the role of the father can be used to offer reassuring advice to parents. You can use it to explain that fathers are just as capable of being primary carers as mothers are. And equally, you can use the research to reassure single mother or lesbian parent families that not having a father around doesn't have any kind of negative effect on the children's development. Either way, you can use the research to offer reassuring advice and reduce parental anxiety about the role of the father, which is a good thing, okay? So those are your three evaluation points. Now, just before we finish off, the role of the father is named on the spec. That means that technically you could get a 16 mark essay on this topic. And so you need to be thinking about what you're going to use to structure a six mark outline. Now, given that we've been using research studies in this video, we're going to use some of those studies for that outline. However, we're not going to be using all three because that would be too much. And so we're only going to use what we need to demonstrate what the role of the father actually is, or more importantly, what research has shown about the role of the father. So this is what I would do if I was writing this outline. I'd start off with a little bit of an introduction. As always, it sets the scene and it just means that you are easing the examiner in a little bit to your answer. Okay, so we'll talk about the fact that it's focused on a variety of questions and what those questions are. I'd then jump into my first study. And my first study is gonna be Grossman um, and I'd tell them what that study was. Okay, what they did, what they were looking at and also very importantly, what they found. Okay, nice little paragraph on Grossman et al. from 2002. I would then go on to talk about my second study, and my second study is Field et al. It's in direct contrast to the Grossman study, and it actually shows something very distinctive. I've kind of cut it down a little bit because obviously giving all of the information is going to be a little bit too long, but I've got the important things in there, and importantly as well, I've got a little bit of a conclusion, which is that 
The research shows that fathers can be nurturing under the right circumstances and that gender is not key, but rather the level of responsiveness. Now, the reason I have left Schaffer and Emerson out is because, in my opinion, it doesn't really add anything to the outline. It doesn't really show us anything about the role of the father. It just tells us that children tend to attach their fathers second. However, these two studies show distinctively that fathers do something as an attachment figure, whether it's in Grossman's study and we're showing that fathers have a unique role surrounding play and stimulation, or whether it's field study where we're showing that fathers can be primary caregivers and they can fulfill the role just as well as mothers do. Either way, we are showing a role of the father in attachment. Okay, so this is how I would do it. This outline as it stands on the screen right now is about 187 words. Again, it's a fairly long outline and you don't really want to be going much longer than that just in terms of time, but 187 words is a nice amount just to kind of get the right amount of depth and breadth in your answer and show the examiner that you know what you're talking about, okay? So that is the end of the video, and I am going to leave it there. I hope it's been useful, and I hope it's all made sense. If you've got any questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section below, as always, and I will do my best to get back to you. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you in the next one.